Hey, John Dillon here from visualbroccoli.com. This happens to be one of my favorite subjects to talk about, and that's using images as really your key focal point in your presentation. And it really doesn't make any difference what my topic is, but I, a lot of times, will use an image as the primary visual guide, not only for myself as an instructor, but also for my audience to help me you know, go through my presentation. And here are some samples. You know, here's like a professionally uh, shot photograph that I purchased uh, off of iStock.com. And I just simply cleaned out the background, added a little glow to it. So really uh, a nice professional touch. And this is part of a, a talk that I do on a subject using games. Here's another one. Again, same concept. And again, these are very visual images that really stand out and are much different than anybody else. And just with learning some real basic techniques in Photoshop, I'm going to show you how to do this. Also, if you don't want to purchase, you can also shoot your photos. Now, these aren't as clean as the previous photos, but they certainly also have an effect, and they're also very personal to the story I'm telling or the topic I'm telling. So what we're going to do in this lesson is take a photograph like this and turn it into this, which isn't that difficult. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we have our talent, and he is standing in front of a pull down screen so you can see this is not necessarily a studio that this photo was shot in so very simple I had him pose in the shot I want it I wanted somebody thinking so first step let's unlock the background layer to do that double click on the background it's gonna by default one name it layer zero which that is fine but I'm gonna refer to him as the talent throughout this tutorial so I'm just gonna give it a name now you see the lock icon has gone away now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mask. You don't have to do this. You can simply hit the delete, but I like the mask. It gives me flexibility to come back and do a little cleanup, especially if I save this program or this file and come back and I want to make changes. If I delete it, it's gone. Versus doing some undos, I can't bring it back. So I'm going to use a mask. And that's just a habit. Try to get in the habit whenever possible to use the mask, and it's just good technique to begin with. I wish someone would have told me that when I first started using Photoshop. Okay, let's go ahead and extract this background. I'm going to go over here, and there's a magic wand and quick selection tool. I'm going to actually choose the quick selection tool. This is pretty simple, especially with this image. And I made this pretty easy myself. He's wearing a blue shirt, not a white shirt on a white background. So... Keep it simple when you start off. I'm going to go ahead and start in the corner and just click and hold down and come over here and start grabbing. And we have pretty much grabbed all of it right here. Problem is, we grabbed a little bit too much of this patch because it's white. That's okay. Let's go ahead and zoom in. We still get the marching ants. I'm going to go ahead and choose the quick selection tool again, but you'll see up here in our options we have three choices. And the plus, right here in the center, has a plus. That adds, or that's what we're selecting. The minus will actually take away. So I want to actually have a little circle here with a line, uh, negative line in it. I'm going to come down here and just click within the patch and bring that area back and just kind of get close to the edge. And have to play a little with it. And look at that. I have now brought it back. Looking good. Now one other thing here. And sometimes, don't try to take it all in one bite, you know, at one time. I'm just going to hit, hit, go ahead and fill this with black. Now, if you didn't have a, a mask layer, you can hit the delete key. But I like to keep my options open. And you'll see why in a second. I'm going to go ahead and grab the paint bucket tool. And I'm going to paint. Let's go ahead and go full screen here. If I have the black area on this, on this mask, it's going to make that area kind of hide it. So that's what the mask is going to do is hide this layer. I can always bring it back. Now let's zoom in over here with the antenna. Grab the quick selection tool again and let's grab in here. Oops, make sure you have the plus one, the center. And come down here. And that's looking good. A little spot there. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and grab our paint bucket tool and get rid of that. Now one little technique I like to do because you see now we have the transparent transparency and that's represented by the boxes in the background. Let's create a new layer. 
drag it below our talent. Let's add a blue background, kind of emulating our PowerPoint. So I'm just going to grab any old blue. Let's get rid of the marching ants here, though. Select, deselect. Fill the background with blue. The reason I'm doing this, you kind of see some things you may not be, be able to see with a transparent background. I didn't quite catch that until I put the blue layer there. So let's grab the brush. Make sure black is the foreground color. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush by using the left bracket. Whoops. Problem is there, you see it, that's black. I'm on the wrong layer. So let's undo that. Make sure we select the talent mask. I want to make sure I grab the mask itself. So this is highlighted. If I had the photo, you see the white line around the photo. I want the mask. So here I can actually now paint that away. Look at that. And if I wanted to, I can really kind of anal and clean that up. But there's lots of ways we can do that. For the most part, this is going to work for me. And I'm just kind of moving around with the shift key and looking at the edges. And for the most part, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead to full screen. So view, fit on screen. And let's go ahead and crop this the, the lower part of the body off because that's going to be too hard to work with. So I'm going to just grab the crop tool, kind of give myself a generous header. No pun intended. Come down right below the belt and make sure I get rid of the screen 100%. Hit enter and we're done. Last thing is, I'm liking this. I'm going to go ahead and poke out the eyeball. And now the last thing we need to do is save the file. So file, save as. And we're going to go ahead and save it as a PNG file. And I'm just going to create a new folder. And we're going to call him Thinking Man. Not thinning man, thinking man. And do save. And it's going to ask me for PNG options. Just go ahead and say none and OK. And we're done. We've just finished this and we can bring it into uh, our PowerPoint presentation. And we're going to have a nice, crisp image of our standalone person. No pesky white box. One other thing you do have an option of, and this is totally up to you. I'm going to go ahead and add a layer above the blue layer. And what I would suggest is try both. See what you like. And we're going to call this one Glow. Now, I'm going to select him. And how I'm going to do that is this. I'm going to, on the PC, put, put my finger on the control key on the Mac, push it on the command key and hold it down. Click on now the mask layer of our talent. And that's going to select it. You see the marching ants around the talent. We're on the glow layer. So now I'm going to bring white to the foreground and fill this glow layer with white. So grab the paint bucket tool. Fill white. Now you can't, may not have seen that, but right there it filled with white. Let's go ahead and deselect. And what I'm going to do here now is, is just actually add a filter. Blurred. Now this is totally optional. You should just play with this. This is a way to clean up if your edges, are, if your 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 person up there kind of has some rough edges. This is a nice way to soften it where it doesn't stand out as much. So this image actually turned out pretty good. Hit a Gaussian blur, and that's a blur. And actually, I got an 18.6. That seems to work for me. And now what I'm going to do is turn back the layer. You see, we have a real strong glow. Actually, that's almost like plutonium glow. That's too much. So we're going to drop the opacity of this down to maybe like 21. And it's real subtle. And I can even, you know, soften it. And if I want to say, so you know what, I'm kind of liking this, but I want to even, um, you know, do that glow again and maybe even make it, you know, even further. So you have some choices and you can play with that. And again, you can turn off this layer and save it as a PNG file. One little thing I want to warn you on. I'm going to select the glow layer, go up to edit, free transform, and make sure that my glow does not go all the way to the edge. In fact, if you look over here on this side, I have just enough room. If this edge would actually go over, over all the way to the left, then what would happen is, is I would have a solid line 
when I bring this into my image, and that's not ideal. So you want to make sure you have space so the glow does not go all the way to the edges. On the bottom here, it's not a big deal because this is going to typically sit at the bottom of your page, so that's okay. But we don't want the glow to go all the way over to the edges. So it doesn't, and we're good. Turn off this and save it. Well, that's all the time we have for in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let us know. Until the next time, I hope you always find unique ways to make your presentation more editable for your audience. Take care.